Hi everyone, my name is Brian Campbell and I'm a NASA Senior Earth Science Specialist at the Goddard Space Flight Center's NASA Wallops Flight Facility located in Wallops Island, Virginia. Today for Fall 2021 AGU, I'll be talking to you virtually about the GLOBE program, the Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment program. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into talking about the GLOBE program trees and how there are NASA Earth observing missions that complement the GLOBE protocol observations. Hope you enjoy. The GLOBE program is funded by NASA with support from NOAA, NSF, and the U.S. Department of State. GLOBE, the Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment program, is an international science and education program that brings together students, formal and informal educators, scientists and researchers, citizen scientists, and families together with the opportunity to participate in data collection and the scientific process by taking local to global observations. And as you can see here, we are part of 126 countries, over 37,000 schools, over 42,000 teachers, we have over 213,000 GLOBE observers. These are the citizen scientists who use the NASA GLOBE Observer to submit data to the GLOBE database. Since its inception in 1995, the GLOBE program has almost 210 million measurements and observations submitted to the database. And just this month, we are almost at 1.5 million measurements. The GLOBE program connects students, teachers, and scientists from around the world through hands-on science research activities called protocols. Uh, we're sampling invertebrates, and then we're looking at our key and deciding what they are, and then we're going to put it on the GLOBE website. So they're looking at data that students around the world have collected, and they're seeing how their data is going into that same pool. And so now they're part of this global group of students who are monitoring all parts of the ecosystem. No matter where we live, our common bond is the Earth. And GLOBE allows all of us to discover and learn about the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil we use. GLOBE connects us to our planet and one another through interactive exploration. I think it's like cool to see that everybody all around the world are doing this just to help the Earth. The GLOBE program encourages students to be curious about the things they see every day like clouds, streams, and plants. Through the data students collect, GLOBE helps build a bridge between today's science research and the next generation of scientists because professional scientists are able to access the data collected by students around the world. In turn, students become more engaged and involved with science. To know that, you know, a NASA expert or a GLOBE expert is going to use that actual data that's really exciting for the kids and us. Take the first step to encourage your students to discover, explore, and investigate their world. Do GLOBE today. Don't just read about science, do science. As you just heard, the GLOBE program is broken down into lots of different measurements. The measurements are categorized by the Earth spheres. We have the atmosphere and the protocols for measurements are ones like aerosols, barometric pressure, clouds, precipitation, water vapor. Then we have the biosphere, like biometry, including tree height, carbon cycle, green up and green down, phenological gardens. And we have the hydrosphere protocols, ones like dissolved oxygen, mosquito habitats, and water transparency. And we have the pedosphere protocols, everything from bulk density to frost tubes to soil temperature, soil moisture. And then we have Earth as a system learning activities. This is where we like to see how all the different measurements from the Earth spheres interact with one another through activities. Ones like seasons and seasonal patterns, seasonal change on land and water regional boundaries, and components of the Earth system. As part of the GLOBE program, we have the NASA Globe Observer, which is the Globe Program's citizen science project. Currently, with the NASA Globe Observer, 
citizen scientists can use the mobile devices to observe clouds, mosquito habitats, land cover, and trees, meaning tree height and tree circumference. With these, we can take local observations to help understand the global picture of our changing planet. Right now, we're going to dig a little deeper and talk about trees and the GLOBE program and how NASA Earth observing missions tie into all of this. This is super important and you'll see very soon how we can take observations with the GLOBE program and then compare them to NASA satellites and missions. Hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. Well, let's talk a little bit about tree height and why it's important. Did you know that tree height is the most widely used indicator of an ecosystem's ability to grow trees? Did you also know that tree height observations are such a vital measurement because it helps researchers understand how much carbon is being pulled in from the atmosphere by trees, okay? And being stored by trees. Think of a really, really large tree with a large trunk and a large branches and lots of leaves. That tree can take in a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as opposed to, say, a sapling. Tree height is one of those things that can really help us understand this gain or loss of biomass, which can help us understand further the calculations of carbon that trees and forests take in from or release into the atmosphere. There's several NASA missions out there that look at tree height from space. And the one we're gonna focus on today is ICESat-2, the Ice Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite 2. Yes, since its name is ICESat-2, it focuses on the climate change science of looking at the melting of the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica, looking at glacial melt, uh, glacial retreat, but also because it's an onboard laser altimeter on ICESat-2, it can measure the height of many other things like, for instance, trees and forests. It can, men it can look at uh, the height of buildings and bodies of water like the oceans and lakes and rivers. So lots of other things. If it has elevation on our planet, ICESat-2 will be able to measure it. So how does it do that? ICESat-2 uses what's called LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging. And most of you probably know it's an active remote sensing technology, basically the laser version of radar. It uses pulses of laser light to measure the 3D structure and height of objects on Earth. So basically what's happening is, is we're calculating the time it takes the laser pulse to leave the satellite, hit the Earth's surface, and come back to the satellite. And with that time, we can figure out how tall things are on our planet. So, let's talk a little bit more about trees and tree height. There's a program that, that I work with and that is NASA funded called the Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment Program, or GLOBE for short. Through the GLOBE program, there are 123 participating countries involved. The program was started in 1995 by Al Gore and so we're in the 25th year of the GLOBE program and there are almost 200 million observations taken by students, educators, and citizen scientists in those 25 years. Now what do I mean by measurements? Well the GLOBE program was designed for, first of all, for students to go out around the world and take observations like air temperature and precipitation and soil moisture and looking at soil characterization, looking at tree height, uh, all, all different types of biometry like land cover and green up, green down and seasonality. It was all designed for students to take these observations locally, share them with the rest of the world so everyone can understand what's happening locally to better understand the global picture of how our planet is responding to change. With tree height, Tree height was originally part of the biometry protocol and still is for students and educators, but we've advanced it a little bit into citizen science. So here, what you're seeing here is there's two ways through the GLOBE program that you can measure tree height. One is building a handheld clinometer with just paper and some simple tools. Another way is to use the NASA GLOBE Observer Trees Tool for Citizen Science, which uses the, your mobile phone's built-in magnetometer 
to measure the angles to the base of a tree and the top of the tree, and then you count the number of steps you take as you walk to the base of the tree. The phone is programmed with some trigonometry in this NASA Glow Observer Trees tool to get you the height of the tree that you're observing. Now, one way we like to try to maximize accuracy of the tree height coming from the students, educators, and citizen scientists is to have them do a handheld clinometer measurement of tree height and then also use the citizen science trees tool on the NASA Globe Observer to take one as well and then do a comparison. If you see that they are very close, then you did a great job and things be, seem to be working out perfectly. If you notice that they're you know, pretty far off, if you maybe you get uh, with a clinometer, the tree is 10 feet and with the app, you get the tree is 22 feet, then you know something's wrong. One of your calculations is wrong. So you can go and then try it again and basically practice makes perfect. It's like the scientific method. You got to do it over and over again to get better at it and increase that accuracy with the data. Hi, this is Brian Campbell of the NASA Wallops Flight Facility. I'm the tree science lead for the NASA Globe Observer. Today I'm going to talk to you how to take an actual observation using the NASA Globe Observer Trees Tool. So in order to get started, you first have to go through the introduction. In the introduction, it will ask you for some very vital information. You have to input your height, and if you input your height, what the app will do is it will then estimate the eye level of your phone's camera from above the ground and also it will estimate your stride based on that height. You also have to determine if you're going to use the metric system or the English system in your observations for the units for your tree height measurements. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started taking this observation. Before we do any of this, I want to make sure that you're aware that in order to do this the way you should be doing it, you want to be able to do this safely and legally wherever you are. If you happen to be on private property where there's a tree, make sure you get the permission. But you want to make sure that you do this safely and legally and follow all local jurisdictions and laws in your area. So let's get started. So we're going to go into the trees tool and we're going to just go click trees, new tree observation, and what you get, you will get the time, you'll get a date stamp, time and date. Make sure that's right. And then what it's going to do, it's going to ask for service conditions. We want to know what's happening around your local environment when you're taking the tree observation. Meaning, is there snow or ice in the ground? No. Standing water? No. Is it muddy? No. N no dry ground. There are leaves on the trees and it's not raining or snowing. So then once you do that, you're going to take the measure the base of the tree. So this is really cool because you click next measure base and your camera will open up and you're going to make sure that your phone's camera is always at your eye level. So keeping it at eye level, I'm going to go to the base of the tree and I'm going to align this line, this white dotted line to it. There we go. It's at the base of the tree. I like that. I'm going to continue to measure the tree top. Keeping it at eye level, you're just going to angle the phone up to the top of the tree. And there we go. We're at the top of the tree. We got the top of the tree. 
So what we're doing is we're measuring the angle from your eye level to the base of the tree and the top of the tree, and the phone has been pro your phone uses the internal magnetometer and the app uses that information to calculate these angles in order to get you to the to measure the uh, the actual height of the tree. So we have the base and we have the top. Now we want to take a picture of the tree. And this happens to be a really pretty Bradford pear tree. So we're going to click on that and it takes a picture of the tree. Now, since I'm on a flat surface, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk normally to the tree. Okay, and you should ultimately be about 25 to 75 feet away from the tree. I'm about at you know 25 to 27 feet away from the tree. But as I walk towards the tree, I'm going to walk normally. That's super important to walk normally to the base of the tree. Normal steps because that's what the app based your stride on with your height that you input into the introduction section. I should also mention that there is a tutorial section in the app that you need to do before you start so you can learn exactly how to do the tree height observation. But now I'm gonna to walk to the tree and I'm gonna walk normally to the tree, normal steps, counting my numbers out loud. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 steps. So you input that into the box, 18 steps. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the location. It'll give you the latitude and estimated latitude and longitude of the tree. Okay, it'll tell you what you think the, what the, the app thinks your estimated accuracy is. And if you like it, you can hit set position. But if you don't, what you can do here, you can go to a map. And this map, you can move with two fingers and say exactly where that tree is. Okay. So I think it's right about here, okay? So once I set it, I hit set position. Then you're gonna to come to a screen that says circumference. If you have a tape measure available, you can then take the circumference of the tree at breast height about four, four and a half feet above the ground surface, all right? Now I should also mention that since we did it this way, we're on a flat surface. If you happen to be on an area that's very sloped, like you're walking uphill to the base of the tree or you're walking downhill to the base of the tree, what you can do is you can pull out that tape measure and from where you took the observation from originally, you can measure the exact distance from the location of where you were standing to the base of the tree. And then you can put that information, <coughs> excuse me, in this section. The section here is the review section. It gives a camera height, the stride length, the number of steps you put, distance to the tree, and then in the yellow section, the calculated tree height. And if you don't like something in here or you took the actual measurement from the base of the tree, from the location where you're standing to the base of the tree, you can hit the edit button and you can put that distance to tree right in here. So once you do, you just hit finish okay so then all that information then will be sent to the globe database where researchers student researchers professional researchers and citizen scientists can access that, inf access that information so I'm gonna send my trees data now and it's being sent to globe and then there are places on the app that you can go look to see where you actually took your tree height observations so before we finish, okay, that's the actual tree height observation, okay? But before we, we finish this, this little clip here, a couple things I want to uh, focus on to make sure that you remember is that you always want to keep the phone at eye level when you're taking the measurements, okay? So always at eye level. That's the most important part because if you, if you look at the base of the tree and you go like this or you go to the top of the tree like this, you're changing the angle at which you're viewing the base and the top of the tree. An important thing to remember is that if you have multiple people taking observations using the same device, what you need to do is you need to change the height of the observer each time because we're assuming that they're going to be of different heights. So um, if they're of different heights but using the incorrect height, the tree height observation will be incorrect. It'll be an erroneous tree height observation. 
So how you can remedy that, when you go into the trees tool, there's a little question mark, that's the help section. You click on help and it says change current user height settings. So when you can do that, you can go right in and change the height of the observer about to take the observation. So hopefully all this helped you in understanding how easy it is to take a tree height observation using the NASA Globe Observer Trees tool. Have fun using the NASA Globe Observer Trees tool and thank you for all your vital tree height observations. The GLOBE program, as you can see here, we have observations coming from all over the world. As I mentioned, there's 123 participating countries. What you're seeing here on this graphic is the GLOBE visualization system. It's a database where all the GLOBE data goes. This just happens to be all the tree height data that has come through the GLOBE program that has been submitted to the GLOBE database since 1995. There are over 40,000 tree height observations from over 13,000 global locations. That's a lot of data, but for research over a long period of time, that is not enough. We need more data, and hopefully some of you listening to this, or if not all of you, will go out and take some tree height measurements with the GLOBE program. So this visualization system here allows you to go in and zoom into a particular area that you're interested in. Here I zoomed into a particular tree, and when I zoom in, I get some specific information. I get the time and date it was observed, what the tree height is, and what the elevation is on the ground at that location. And then also, I get the, the geographic coordinates, I get the latitude and longitude, and once again, I get the elevation as well, and the location source, this happens to be GPS. So all this information is available on the GLOBE database. It's really amazing, there's lots of it, as I mentioned, with all the different protocols, the 50 plus protocols on the GLOBE program, there's almost 200 million observations in 25 years. Tree height, we're trying to get more of, but the, I should mention also that the tree height observations started in 1995, but only became part of the NASA GLOBE Observer Citizen Science uh, Trees Tool on March 26, 2019, and we've had almost 25,000 just from the app since March 26th of 2019. So the numbers are coming in fast and furious and we're so, so happy for that. And so are the researchers that I work with every day. They want that data density as part of these measurements. Now, I mentioned earlier something called the Open Altimetry Online Tool. So this is uh, created by NSIDC and um, it's a way that you can go in and visualize ISAT data and what we're talking about now is ISAT2 data. So you can look at data all around the world. You can look at surface elevations, you know, the elevations of the ice, but we're gonna focus on trees. So if we go into the program a little bit, we're gonna get a map that looks like this. These are all ice at two orbit tracks and the colored dots you see, those are all photons, okay? So I found one that hit my area on my property in Maryland and I'll show you what I did with it. But when I go into it, when I look at it, I can look at the photon data specifically, and I can look at each individual tree canopy height that was in that location, basically where that 14 meter diameter photon hit the Earth and then bounced back to the satellite, and then the data came back to Earth. So that's what we're looking at here. So on this map here, this is a map of my location, and that little grayed out box there is just a sample that I took, and it, I sampled these photons. And what you're going to look at is a photon towards the bottom of that, that square, okay? So it's the uh, third one up from the bottom. And it gives you the latitude and longitude on open altimetry. And what I did was where you see the NASA Globe Trees Tool data and land cover data, this is where I did some comparisons. I took observations with the Citizen Science Tool and I got trees, tree height data and land cover data. And then I compared it to open altimetry. And you can see here, the ISAT2 data and the NASA Global Observer data match up really closely, and that's a success. You can see here, there's the tree height specifically, and then that's the location of where the photon hit. So, perfect. Now, if you want more information, here's some associated links and contact information, and feel free to contact me at brian.a.campbell at nasa.gov. Thanks so much.